Welcome to Victor School Academy. This is Web Design 101. We are going to learn the basis of web design, and I expect that by the end of this lesson, you would understand everything that has to do with what a website is and how is a website built. I hope you are excited to be here just as I'm excited to impart to you this knowledge. All right, so let's start from the basics, ground zero. I want to presume that you don't have any knowledge about website design whatsoever. So we are going to take it from the basic level so that anybody at all respecting of your depth of knowledge or lack of it, you would be able to appreciate this and be able to build websites by the end of our bootcamp. When you talk about website design, the first question that we need to ask ourselves is, what is a website? What is a website? Basically, when you talk about a website, it has to do with a collection of various pages that are put on the internet so that people can have access to it. So these pages contain information that we are trying to deliver to particular people. So for instance, a business can have a website. Basically, what it means is that the business has a certain number of pages about them that is available on the internet 24 7 so that anybody looking for information about this business can go to this particular website and have access to it so how is it possible that a website is a number of pages on the internet basically let's bring this analogy in if you have a computer and you have a number of pages on your computer yes but it's unfortunate that only you can access it. So I could basically design something on my computer and I will be the only one who has access to it. But if I want you at the other end to be able to know the things that I have put together, the things that I've written, I want you to have access to it anytime you want. Then I have to put it on a computer that is connected to the internet. And such a computer, people, special companies have come together to make available such computers so that some people like us who are web designers can design these websites or these pages and put them on their computers. Their computers are such that they are connected to the internet 24 7 so that anybody at all can have access to the information anytime, any day. So basically, these computers are what we call hosting. Okay, so if you ever heard about the word hosting of websites, it basically refers to we putting these pages that we have created that we want people to have access to on a particular computer somewhere. It, it, may, it could even be your own computer, so prior you are able to connect to the internet and make it available so that people can have access, direct access to the information on your computer. But preferably, we like to use that of these specialized companies called hosting companies. That is the basic explanation of what uh, hosting or what hosting is. The next thing we want to talk about is the website itself. I mentioned that the website is made up of pages. So these individual pages are called web pages. For instance, you go to a particular website and you find that the website has a page called home page. We have the about page or about us page, contact us page, services page, portfolio page. So these individual pages are what we refer to as web pages. And when you put them together, they form the website. When website, when the internet came up and the web started, the, it wasn't so fancy. People would just design anything. Just like your web document that you put out, you no images, it's just a text and you put it there. But now we realize that humans are drawn to beauty or anything that is attractive. So for people to be attracted to the website that you create, it has to be well created. It has to be well designed so that it will attract people. So at the end of the day, when we talk about you mastering web design, we are talking about you mastering the ability to design these pages so that it attracts people who come there and it serves serve certain purposes for which you want it to say so somebody can have a website that is solely for informational purposes meaning i want this website to be online so that people can have access to the information specific information so let's talk about my company 
My opening hours are from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. I want it to be available so that anybody looking for information about my company will be able to get such information. So that is what a website basically is. Now, how then do we have these pages or these files put on a computer somewhere that we don't know about? How do we get access to? Or how do other people also get access to these files that we've kept somewhere remotely? The answer is what we refer to as domain names. Basically, a domain name, we'll get into the computer and I'll explain these things better to you. But basically, a domain name is the name on the site, the address that you use to access the website. So, for instance, we are going to use my company's website for an example, and that is iCrate.com. So, iCrate.com is the domain name that people can use. And what is happening behind the scene? I don't want to make this more tech techy, but I want you to appreciate the basics. So what is happening behind the scene is that this iCrate.com that we mentioned is connected to a certain IP address. I hope you have heard of what you have heard of IP address before. So basically, every computer has an IP address. So the domain name is connected to the IP address such that anytime somebody enters that particular domain name, there is something that we also call the DNS. Okay, so the DNS will show us the particular server. So that computer that the hosting company is using to host or hold your files or keep your files there is called a server. So that server has an IP address and the DNS is able to link us. So the domain name is here. When you put in the domain name on the browser, the, the DNS helps us to locate the server where your files are kept. Okay, And through the IP address, we are able to select the particular files that you are looking for and present it to you. That is how come we can have multiple files on the same computer, but we can all host our website on the same server, but specifically your domain name will lead to only your files and mine will lead to only my files. So let's get into the computer and explain some of these things practically for you. So this is a website, the iCreate website. And when we talk about the domain name, we are looking at something like this, iCreate.com. That is what you usually enter into the address bar. So we have iCreate.com. And when you hit enter, it takes you to this page. So this page is the home page. So as you can see, we have home here. That is the home page. The address that I've entered is taking me directly into the home page. So what's happening behind the scene, it, once again, is that there is an IP address and what we call a DNS. Like there is a connection of this name that you are seeing. The name is friendly so that you can easily remember it. The IP address is not that friendly. It's a, a series of numbers, one, 192.168. It is not something that you can easily remember. So they've used the domain name to make it nice or memorable so that anytime you want to uh, remember, it's easy to recall. Okay. So I create just for when you enter, there's something, something goes on behind the scene. There is a transfer protocol that transfers the information that, okay, I'm looking for this file. So that's why when you are typing, you type HTTPS. Okay. That is a transfer protocol that will take you to the file that you are looking for. Once it gets to the server, it goes to look for a specific thing. So for iCreate.com, it's looking for the home page because that is what the home page is connected to. If I want to go to iCreate, the blog on iCreate, it takes me straight to there. And that means that the URL that I'm going to use here is iCreate.com slash blog. So this transfer protocol is going to identify what specific file is on the server that is called blog and deliver that to you. So basically that is what happens behind the scene. Now let's look at the structure of the website. I've told you that having the aesthetics of the website is very important now. It is what will keep your clients coming. It is what will make somebody even want to hire you as a web designer to design their work for them. So when you come to this particular site, you see how 
nice and beautiful it is okay the basic structure is when you have a header here so just like you write essays you have your heading or header however you call it or title then we have the body of the page then you scroll down 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 we have the footer so at least these three things should be at the back of your mind when you're creating a website you have for each page you may have the header how you design it is usually up to you and the kind of inspiration that you have behind your design so we have that then the body itself then the photo then these are individual pages that you can have depending on what exactly you are putting out there so you can have a lot of pages or a few pages there are even websites that are made up of just one page so we call them single page applications so we have those ones as well okay so basically that is what a website is and now let's talk about how a website design or develop so you realize that i keep using the word website design now let's try to explain the difference between web designing and web development when you talk about the development it has to do with you writing the code from scratch so learning all the basic HTML, that's the language that we use for building websites. You learn CSS, the one that we use to beautify the site. Then you learn JavaScript, the one that will help us to interact with the items on the website. Then finally, you have to also choose another language that will help us give functionality to the things on our website. Say that when I click on a button, who a certain data for me so that data that will come there is a particular language that will help us pull that one then finally you also need to learn one more language that is database it will help you to communicate with the database so that the data stored on the database can be pulled. you realize how cumbersome this is so that is how web development is but on the other hand we have web designing where all you need to do is to design so that is way easier you're not going to write any code people have done all those hard work for you it's basically about dragging something dropping it here and there so you know uh, i i want a button at this particular point so let me drop it here so i want this test to be this way you don't write any code so basically those are the differences between web development and web design when you come to design it there is a much of coding, but when it comes to development, then you have to look at the coding aspect. So with website building, with the options that we have for website building, we have one, the programming, then now we have what we call the low code platforms. Where the low code platforms are basically platforms that allows you to build websites with little knowledge of coding. However, it means that you may here have to code certain things here and there. Okay? Then we have the no code platforms. Where the no code platforms means that you are not going to write any line of code. So you don't need to learn programming to be able to use these no code platforms to build websites. So those are the options that we have when it comes to building websites. One common question that we are usually getting. And I want to clear that one before we continue. Is, is there a difference between a blog and a website? Basically, when you say a blog, a blog happens to be a website where the content put there is regularly updated. So, for instance, if you talk about a news blog, it is a blog that is updated with news as and when the news happens. So, these news agencies, CNN, BBC, all the others, they are constantly putting out information on their websites. Therefore, we can call these websites blogs. The idea of blogs came from people transitioning from journals, the book journals, to online journals. So people decided that instead of writing in books, they rather document it on their websites. And that is the origin of blogging. So basically, once you create a website where you keep putting out content every now and then, or you keep updating the content there every now and then, you can call that a blog. So, in simple terms, a blog is a website whose content is updated regularly.
very important thing that I need us to understand is what we call SSL, SSL certificate. Once you're hosting your website on the internet, there is this important thing, SSL. It's called secured socket layer. You don't need to understand it in particular, but what you need to appreciate is that this is needed for your website to be set to be secure. And now it says that if your website is not secured, people are not willing to do any transaction or even visit the site in the first place. So it's very important for you. And how do you know whether a website has SSL certificate or not? If you enter HTTPS, is this sometimes you are able to enter HTTP without the S and it works. But sometimes you are forced to add the S. So when there is no S there, it means that there is no SSL. Therefore, Google will tell people that your website is not secured. As you can see now, you see this padlock on the site beside the iquit.com. This padlock is telling us that it is secure. If there was no S here, or if I didn't have SSL on this, uh, the SSL certificate on this website, you realize that this will not be there. It will be red and it would be written not secured. So people will be skeptical when it comes to doing any transaction whatsoever with you on your website. So you want to pay attention to SSL when you are creating website. In subsequent lessons, we will learn about how to get domain names, how to get hosting, how to get these SSL certificates and the likes. But in this lesson to summary, what we have learned is what a website is, and how is a website built? So what we established is that a website is just a collection of web pages or a collection of pages containing information about a particular thing. And these files are kept on a remote computer for the server. And the process of keeping the files on these remote uh, servers are called hosting. So anytime you hear about hosting, it's just a matter of you keeping your files on a computer somewhere that you may not necessarily have access to. Then we have what we call a domain name that's able to link whoever is trying to access your computer, whoever is trying to access the files on that server to the files. Okay, so that anytime a person goes to a browser and enter the domain name, they should be directed to the files so that they will get the information they are looking for. I hope you have learned something new in this video. Keep on watching because this is the le first lesson in several lessons for this web design bootcamp. I wish you all the best and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.